All right, cool. All right, welcome to 201 with AJ McLean. Yeah, I was uh, talking about talking about you, I guess yesterday, because we were in Vegas and you mm-hmm. guys were performing. And I was just chilling because I was about to go up and do a little TV hit going into Hootie. And I see you come off stage and I'm like, something wrong with AJ? <laughs> yeah. Like, they're about to go on in like 30 seconds. He's coming up and you come up and you're like, what up? And then you run up and like almost right in time, there you go on. Yeah. And I, well, I saw you and I, and I was like, oh my God, I got to go say it to Bobby. I was like, I haven't seen you in like forever and I hadn't had a chance to congratulate you on the mirror ball and all these different things. So I'm like, yo, I have to go say hi. And knowing most of these radio shows, things never run on time. So we knew that we were like at least 20 minutes behind and that there was a major sound issue. I guess Camille Cabello was having some major sound issues. So we were a little bit worried. So we're like, okay, let's just hold off until we get ours right. And then literally, like, you're pretty much spot on. As soon as I said hi to you, I went, you went up, and it was like the, the whole and intro then you started. Went. I'm like, okay. And I was like, man, that guy cuts it close. <laughs> Got to go. Got to like, go. He, he must do that so much that he's got no fear just off and yeah, on. Yeah, that's pretty much par for the course for me with my entire life. As as of late, things have been going fantastic. We're super blessed. Um, but it's been go, go, go since we picked up tour back in May for the DNA World Tour. Like, we've just been going, going, going. So... I'm just trying to find the time for me now. So, you know. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll get back to the Backstreet stuff later. I've, I'm curious about a lot of the new stuff that you're doing, too. And why don't we start there? Because you're in Nashville now. You're at my house, obviously. So why are you here now? Uh, I literally just got off a plane. Um, I appreciate and, that, too. And, you and, you yeah, came, came right up, got the rental well, car. Well, it's funny. Like, when you're like, dude, I've, I've, I've got one day. And I'm like, okay, cool. One day. I'll be here for, like, about eight or nine. And then my management's like... Yeah, so it's going to happen as soon as you land. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I literally am going to That's New York fine. in the morning, I'm like, so I'm cool. glad we can work Let's it out. Let's go. So land, shot right over here. But um, I'm actually here in town finishing up my uh, my debut country solo record. So I'll be actually in the studio most of the week, um, going to a pre-taping of the CMA Christmas special tomorrow. Um, going to go see my girl Carrie Underwood this week as well. She's going to so, play at Bridgestone. You going to yep, the show? I am. Yeah. yeah. So uh, just kind of a work casual work week you know like when i'm coming to nashville to me it's 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 more about just leisure and just kind of go at going at my own pace and just seeing old friends and just being creative and just being inspired i mean this this city is so it's just so inspiring to me so i'm gonna have fun this week this is gonna nice little breather for me i wonder being super successful with i looked it up here selling 130 million records or so Mm. to starting over again yeah to having people, again, I've seen you in, in stadiums and people sing every word to every song yep. <clears throat> to, again, you're starting over again. Yeah. I mean, what a weird juxtaposition of, I just saw you play to 14,000 people. Yeah. And now you're in town cutting an intro record and, you know, going, hey, everybody, I'm doing a country record. Like, let's, yeah. let's pay, pay me a little bit of attention. You know, it's, it's, it's been a really, in, like, interesting process because when this whole thing started, uh, I kind of throw it throw it back to when we shot Crossroads with us in FGO. That's when the kind of whole ball kind of kind of started rolling, which was um, a bunch of like local publishing people and label people approached me afterwards, and they were like, "Dude, have you ever thought about doing a country record?" I'm like, "Honest to God, no. I I never thought anybody would take me seriously." Um, and they're like, "Well, you've got the chops. You should definitely just give it a try." So I flew out to Branson, Missouri, and uh, I cut a couple demos and. It felt right, but it didn't feel right, right. And then flew out here to Nashville, spent about eight months out here on on and off again, met a bunch of beyond talented writers, and it just started to click. And the one thing about country music that I've learned is, well, two things. Country fans can read through all the BS. They, they know if you're trying to be someone that you're not, and they won't accept it. And two, you know, country music tells, tells you know, stories, which is something that's, the polar opposite of what I do as, as a as a pop star, if you want to say that, or right. pop artist, whatever. Um, you know, that's feel good music. It's all positive music, but it's not really kind of getting in, in in the depths of your you know soul. So there's a lot of about me that people don't know, or that they think they know the whole story. And you know, I just want to talk about my beautiful family, my beautiful girls, my wife, my life, the ups and downs, fun songs, good songs, sad songs. Country music is the perfect outlet for that. And I've made so many friends out here and so many other artists that country music compared to pop music, like there's so much more competition, I feel, in the pop genre. Country, you get 10 hours to go on the same tour together and it's just a big party, having fun, just going out and celebrating music and celebrating life. 
you know, pop, it's all about who has the most followers, who has the most streams, who has the most downloads. And it's just like, I just want to get away from that for, you know, a little bit and just see, kind of find myself and kind of, kind of find my own I identity, if you will. And you, I, you bring up the Florida Georgia line stuff. Hmm. Uh, how, did, how did that in your world come together? Like, how did you hear about it and get brought into it? Uh, so Nick used to live here in Franklin about uh, five, six years ago. And uh, during CMA Fest, he went to see the guys and he sent all of us a video from their show because he texts all of us in a, in a uh, group text saying, oh my God, I'm at Florida Georgia line and they're doing Backstreet's Back in their show. And we're like, no, they're not. He's like, <laughs> no, dude, trust me. And he sends this video and the crowd's going nuts. And I'm like, that's so weird. Like country show, they just finished doing like cruise and all this stuff. And all of a sudden they're going into Backstreet's Back and the crowd singing every single word. And I'm like, interesting. So Nick kind of was the one that kind of really started that whole relationship. And then they were about to finish up Digging Your Roots, and they had this song, God, Your Mom, and Me. They had already cut their parts, and Nick came to us and said, the guys are really interested in maybe us doing this as a possible collaboration. So we got with this amazing producer, Joey Moy, back at uh, Blackbird Studios at the, uh, I forgot the name, I think it's at the Standard, or no, where's that, where's Blackbird? It's off of Sunset, somewhere in L.A. Um, cut the song, and at that time, radio wasn't even playing us anymore. Like, we hadn't been on top 40 since 2005 with our single Incomplete. So we could still sell out tours. Radio just, just wasn't really, because, you know, radio had changed. It, it had become iHeart and Cumulus and this and that, and it just wasn't the old school way. Um, we are still friends with all the big radio programmers and all the different DJs, but again, they now have to answer to somebody else. So they wanted to play us. They just couldn't. So now, fast forward to God, Your Mama, Me goes straight to number one on country radio. So now we're back on radio, but it's country radio. So it's like, what, what <laughs> is going on? In a weird turn of events. Yeah, very weird turn yeah. of events. And then we shot the video in Destin, Florida, and it just, it just took off. And then cut to us winning a CMT it was just like, what is going on right now? So there was talks briefly for us to possibly do our 25th anniversary album as a country record. But we collectively as a group are like, I don't know if our core fans would really think that's the best move for us now. Who's to say that we don't do that down the road? You know, but, and we've actually had songs over the past 26 years that could easily be on country radio. Songs like Drowning, Save Us Place to Hide, Help Us When She Smiles. Um, our new song, No Place, which did get played on country radio. So that was kind of the whole catalyst of this entire process. And... I reached out to BK and Tyler, and I'm like, guys, I'm, I think I might give this thing a you know, shot. And they were like beyond supportive. They're like, hey, if you need anything, just hit us up. So it's just been this nice kind of open arms experience coming into the world of country, which has been great. So, But like you said, it is this weird shift of coming from 130 million albums, global this, global that, to the grassroots again. But I like it. Is that exciting to you? It's super exciting yeah. to me. I want to play a couple uh, clips from some of the new stuff here. Um, this is what was the first? Was the first one back porch bottle service? Back porch bottle service was the uh, was kind of the initial just just kind of put it out there, get a feel for the you know atmosphere, and just kind of show people this is one direction, one kind of side of where I want to take country for me. Um, just a fun summer jam, you know. We never shot a video for it; it was just a nice little lyric video. Will this be on the um, record? Uh, this will not be on the record. Okay, so this no. one is now gone. This one is turn it off. I say this one's down. gone. Shut bye it bye. Down. All right. See you later. Then what? Then what was the second one you played? Uh, Night Visions was the official kind of first single. So um, this one I can play though and yes. be like, this is the this is one of the ones. Yes. All right. This will be on the record. Um, this was my directorial debut. Um, we, my partner and I, Renee Elizondo, we have a directing team, and uh, we wanted to make a basically like a mini movie. Um, the full length video runs about six and a half minutes. Um, it's got some major twists and turns. And uh, my oldest daughter actually makes a little feature at the end of the video. She was trying to hog the camera the entire time, telling me, Daddy, Daddy, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I'm like, okay, my, my hands are tied. But um, Night Visions was a, to me, was a nice bridge coming from pop into country. Because there is still a pop element to the song, but there's a country element to the song. So 
it to me was a nice kind of, like I said, bridge between the two worlds to kind of hopefully introduce me into the world of country. Let me hear a little bit of this without us, without us talking over it. Let's do one more. Let's do. Uh, well, I got two more up here. Which one you wanna do next? Um, we could do maybe Boy to Man. La. Uh, Give me a couple sentences about this one. Boy to Man uh, was written by this amazingly talented gentleman by the name of Dave Fenley, um, who was actually the second runner-up on last season of The Voice. Um, amazing singer, songwriter, beatboxer. Um, when I heard the song, I just lost it. To me, it was so personal to me about that journey of kind of going from being a boy, becoming a man. And I've had to really do that in my life. I've had to grow up rather fast in this world and in the, in, and, and in the industry. And then now being a father, now being responsible for someone else's life um, twice over with two girls. Um, you know, this song really touched me. And it took a lot of pulling teeth to get my actual wife to be in the video. But... Uh, she looks amazing in it, and it was an, it, it was so much fun to actually shoot the video. It was the first time I had gone back into uh, practical makeup, full-on prosthetics to make me about 75 years old. Although I hope I don't look like that when I'm 75 years old, like I do in the video, because it's pretty haggard. <laughs> did uh, you ever do the face, the, the, the Russian app that hacked I've us? done did the face app, yeah. yeah. I I look like the Dos Equis guy. Is, is, that's pretty that's good. He's, like, he's well, pretty good looking, though. Well, you can do old or oh. cool old. I do cool old, and I have like it's, it's like, like nice silver beard and the silver hair. I look like the Dos Equis guy, so that's not too bad. I was watching uh, a Netflix special where David Letterman's Kanye and David Letterman were together. It was mm -hmm. David Letterman's show, right? And Letterman goes into Kanye's closet, and it's a walk-in closet. And Kanye's like, "Try this on." It's a bunch of the Yeezy stuff. Which, yeah, yeah. By the way, you got Yeezys on. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm big shoe guy too. Yeah. So uh, let, he's like, Letterman's like, "I want to. I don't want to look like an old guy trying to look cool." I want to look like a cool old guy. And, yeah. there's, and there's a difference. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's funny. Like, I was joking yesterday with my with one of my friends talking about, like, how much I love the new design of the brand new Corvette. Like, it's got that Ferrari feel to it. But when I told my wife I thought about possibly getting one, she's like, if you do, I'm leaving you. Like, that's the old guy car trying to be cool. <laughs> and I said it, and my buddy's, like, 56 years old, and we're, and, and we're coming back from this from this meeting yesterday, and sure enough, a Corvette pulls up, and it's this, like, 60-year-old guy with his glasses on, his tank top. I'm like, oh, my God, it's exactly what I just said. Oh, so did you, did you tell her you were going to get it anyway? No, oh. I, I changed my mind. She oh. definitely convinced me of that. <laughs> Let's do one more. This is uh, Give You Away, the new one? Give You Away. This is, yeah. This is a rough one. Rough because. This is about my daughters. Um, this is literally about that moment that I'm going to have to give them away on their on their you know wedding day and just uh you know like it's it's already happening my six-year-old has a crush on an 11 year old boy and her dance class named isaac yes i'm calling you out isaac um i haven't met him yet but uh i got really bothered the other day because she said she smiled at him and he looked at her but he didn't smile back and i was like okay no 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 <laughs> No boy's gonna not smile back to my to my baby girl. So like I like bowed up, and my wife's like, "Relax, they're kids." I'm like, "I know, but that's my firstborn. That's my baby." And then you know now I have two girls, and I have to worry about double the amount of boys. And obviously, as a father, no no man's ever gonna be good enough for my for my kids, you know. But uh, as long as they're happy and whatnot, of course I support it. But writing this song was one thing; performing this was I've performed this song one time at Gillies in Las Vegas when we were when we still had our Las Vegas residency, and I I had to t I got through the first verse, and I told my band to stop. I couldn't get through it. It took me like two or three tries to get through the entire song, and I still didn't get through it. I made it to the last verse, and I was just bawling. The whole the whole place was bawling. It's a very emotional record. Have you thought about and listen? The last thing you need is advice from me, right? <laughs> Have you thought about uh, taking whichever song you feel most passionate about, one of the Night Visions or Boy right. Man, and give you away, and having a few folks not say who the artist is mm. and play it and see what the response is without 
tag, because I've done this with a few artists. Right. And said, hey, I'm not going to tell you who this is. Right. Tell me if you like it or not. Then it, occasionally, it's a, a, a Chesney song. Right. Sometimes it's, a, it's, it's an artist that you wouldn't think would be singing country music. Sometimes it's not even a country song. I'll play, right. you know, and on my show, I'll play hip-hop. I'll do, I'll, yeah. you know, I come from growing up country, but working in pop and hip-hop and just kind of doing alternative and right. sports and moving around. Um, I just think if people heard these and didn't know what it was coming from, because people in our format in country, we go, well, if you haven't always been us, then you can't be us. That's what I've heard. And it's funny because we, we did with our song Incomplete, we actually did that. We set the song out to radio. On pop. On pop. Right. And didn't say it was us. When we first heard the record, we were even like suspect of even cutting it. Like this sounds like an Aerosmith record or, or you know, Bon Jovi record. Why in the world would you put the Backstreet Boys on this like rock ballad? And it was our last biggest hit on radio. And it turned out to be the right you know choice, but it was interesting to see people's faces when they found out that it was the Backstreet Boys. They were like, "Wait, what?" I was like, "No, yeah, it's it, and then it's they, us. they they can like the song without any attachment to anything but the like song. it for the song, and, exactly, and, and for and for the purest thing that it should. Yes, because what I would feel is, and this is not just a you thing. Um, there have been again other artists, even John Mayer, who didn't who wasn't trying to be a country artist. Yeah. I would play John Mayer stuff and I would be like, all right, I'm not going to say who this is. And if you knew, you knew because he has a distinct voice. Exactly. But I just wanted them to go, is this song acceptable to what I'm listening to? Right. And I just wonder if a few folks did this and didn't say that it was A.J. McLean. Yeah. Because some people are going to like it anyway because it's you. Right. Some people aren't going to like it anyway and never hear it because it's a Backstreet Boy and, exactly. he, and he's not country. And I know a lot of these guys yeah. you know, that, that are running radio stations in a lot of companies. Yeah. Man, I just think that you'd have a real shot with some of these people that are really hard to convince mm -hmm. if you just went, all right, play it and don't say who it is. I'm down. And, and, see, I'm and, down. and just see what happens. Yeah. I mean, look, again, I want to make music for music lovers. And again, to me, there's so many songs that I've heard growing up that I still to this day, I either forget or I can't remember who sang it, but the song affected me. The song made a difference in my life for whatever reason. So again, to piggyback on what you're saying, it should be about the song first. It should be about the music first. And then if you find out who it is and you're like, oh, really? Either you're in shock or you're like, oh, well, no, never mind. But at least you're taking a different approach. I like it. I would do it in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's uh, a really good idea. Did you, get a, you want a water? I have one right here. Oh, you got one. Do you ever, I'm curious, and drink away. This is a uh, full water. We we support water on this podcast. Mm. Have all the water you want. Stay hydrated. We we yes. we hate to see. Uh, you said you saw somebody fall down the escalator coming over here. Yes, literally, like six. It was like a six or seven person pileup at the airport. Literally, while I was getting my rental car, this woman was working at the kiosk next to Hertz rental car, and just started yelling, "Hit the stop button! Hit the stop button! Hit the stop button!" And I'm like, "What is going on?" And I looked behind me, and it looked like a cartoon. Like you just you. <laughs> You can't write or make this stuff up. Like nine or so, you know, people are just all piled on top of each other. And I'm just like, that doesn't look good. And I did that, like, that flinch, like, should I go help? And then there was, a, there was plenty of people there. But I was like, oh, my God. Like, okay, somebody's got to be messed up from that moment. Like, somebody's got to be hurt. There's too least. much happening for nobody to be Yeah, hurt. I mean, and here's the thing. I was going to take the elevator right above there, and it said out of service. But there are other elevators that take you down to the same floor. So note to self, if you have too many bags, find an elevator. Just find it. It's just common sense. Find an elevator. Don't try to take 12 bags down a little narrow escalator. It doesn't work. Clearly. What, what is it like for you? Just the airport, for example. You're a pretty distinct looking guy. You got tattoos from your fingertips. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, can you go places without somebody going, hey, AJ? No. It depends. I mean, obviously there's... I don't know. I'm trying to think of his places where I've been where I get out scot-free. Um, just took my first real, like, tropical family vacation in between our European leg of our tour and the U.S. leg that we just finished. My wife's been asking me to take the family down to Hawaii for years. So we, we had a window of, like, 14 days, so we took a week and went, went down to the Big Island. And we were staying in this, like, remote part where I'm like, there's nobody around. There's, like, one food store there's like one golf course there's whatever first day on the public beach 
done. And I'm like, well, okay, we're going to go back to the hotel or we're going to go back to the Airbnb. We're going to go to the, back to the little private beach where there's nobody there. But I wanted to go to the public beach because there's more activities for my kids. Right. But yeah, like literally within 10 minutes of being in the sand, I'm taking selfies and taking pictures. And I'm like, and my, my wife's, she obviously gets it. My kids, not so much. Like my oldest, she, now she wants to be in the pictures. My youngest is like, <laughs> what are you doing with my daddy? Like she gets mad. I'm like, it, it's okay, baby. I'm just taking a quick picture. I'm going to come play with you. But like, yeah, it's, it's still this weird shock, I think, to both my girls. And they both got the bug though, man. They both sing. They both dance. They both want it. It's crazy. I mean, I, I'll support them if they want to be neurosurgeons. I don't care um, as long as they're happy and healthy. But they definitely have the itch to be on stage. Like, it's when, awesome. When was it for you that it got to be where you couldn't walk outside? At what age was it for you? Um, probably like 98, 99 was like when we shut down Times Square um, for at TRL. Okay. To, yeah. yeah. When we shut down Times Square, that was the craziest day because – it was the first time any artist had ever shut down Times Square. We let we we did a live performance from the rooftop of the Viacom building. And then literally after we left TRL, walked right next door and saw the premiere of episode one, Star Wars, and sat next to George Lucas. It was the most surreal day in my life. Because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And to like have this moment happen all in the same day was just insane. But I was still living in Florida. So I had the same mall that I would go to back when we used to call the, the uh, you know, states no fan land because we blew up in Europe first, Europe and the rest of the world. And we come back to the states. It was like crickets. Um, and then all of a sudden I'm at my, my typical mall that I would go to every single weekend. And now things have changed. And it kind of hit me like, whoa, maybe, maybe I can't go out anymore. But I'm the opposite of some of my bandmates. I don't mind the attention. I'll stop and take the pictures. I'll stop and take, you know. The only the only time I don't want to really be bothered is when I'm eating. Plus, nobody wants to watch anyone eat. It's not that flattering, you know what I mean? So, but I will I will always stop, even if I'm in a bad mood. Doesn't matter. For that one moment, you're changing someone's life. You're making somebody happy. You're bringing someone joy. You know, I don't look at what I do as a job. I look at it as a privilege. I get to bring joy and happiness for two hours a night, whether it's solo, whether it's with the group. Let those people forget about their job, their boss, whatever it is, and just come out and just enjoy good music. That's what brings me happiness. So it's, a, it's an honest-to-God privilege, and I couldn't be more grateful. How'd you meet your wife? She was a bartender waitress at Saddle Ranch on Sunset Boulevard. Um, How long have you guys been together? Not been married, together. but together. Ten years. Ten years together. Um, and... Uh, Went in one day on a Sunday morning, um, which is, you know, they have the food there is amazing. And I have ridden the bull. If, you, if you've ever been to Saddle Ranch, I have actually ridden the bull. Uh, I had the record until a couple years ago. I held on for 28 <laughs> seconds uh, before they threw me off. But um, she was working my, you know, table, and I, she, just, she just caught my eye. And uh, we started talking. I asked her out. She said she was single and cool. She claims she didn't know who I was, which I think is a bunch of BS. Um, and then when she found out who I was, she panicked. Our first day was supposed to be dinner and a movie. I just had three long nights in the studio. So I was like, what about just I make dinner at the house and we'll watch something at my house. And then she's probably thinking, oh, your house. I know. <laughs> Genuinely did not think that. So she made up some weird story. And then it just never ended up happening. Two years went by. I ended up dating someone else. Thank God it fell apart. Went back in. She had quit for that two years. Went back in, saw her again, asked her out again, left to go on tour, like immediately after I asked her out, but she waited. And March 22nd, 2009 was our very first date. And we've been together ever since and have two beautiful kids. She's my rock. She's amazing. She, she deserves every award in the world to put up with my antics and has put up with me for the last 10 years. So... Hats off to her. So no secret stash of back, Backstreet Boy posters that you found. No, she her. was an in sync fan. <laughs> she liked well. She 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 liked their dancing better and liked our singing better. But there's a photo of her at our Black and Blue tour. She was 17 years old. She drove her friends out to Vegas from Santa Clarita in California, up in the nosebleeds. And I always ask her, I'm like, so 
looking down at those guys, did you ever think one day you're gonna, that you might possibly marry one? She's like, absolutely not. She, she had a crush on, and you'll see where I'm going with this. She had a crush on Jonathan Knight from, from, New, Kids. from, from New Kids, had a crush on Lance Bass from InSync. from InSync, and then married me. So I'm like, no, babe. No, 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 no. I do support my LGBT community, but I like women. So, but, you know, they're still trying to pinpoint one of us in the group. They're saying, you know, every boy band has to have. I'm like, no, not always. You guys, whenever you guys were, were you ever officially, like, hiatus? Like, did you guys ever just go, we're done? Yeah, I we mean. We don't know if we're coming back? Like, after we finished the Black and Blue tour, um, before we made the Never Gone record, that was the gap that I think the media, fans, a lot of people thought we, quote, unquote, broke up. We've never broken up in 26 years, but we took a well-needed break. And we took about a year and a half off of doing nothing and then about a year and a half to make the Never Gone record. So it became a three-year break that, again, out of sight, out of mind. And then shortly after Never Gone is when Kevin decided he wanted to go take a true hiatus for almost seven years. Um, but we four kept on going. So there's never really been a, a proper, like, break break. I mean... Which I, what was leading me to ask this, like whenever you guys are, are chilling, you all go to your own homes, you have families. Yep. Like yep. Who, who's, who's like your boy? Like who do you still stay close um, with? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm the one that I feel is, is closest to everybody for different reasons. I mean, Kevin and I are the only ones that live in California. I've gone to his house every Easter for the last five years. Um, the Easter Bunny shows up, wink, wink. Um, and it's just awesome. Uh, Brian and I have definitely, I feel, gotten closer over the last few years. Um, uh, just, I think, with with all that he's been dealing with, with his vocals and with his voice and that whole situation, I feel like um, there's been this interesting comparison between me and the world of sobriety and trying to, you know, stay sober and, like, do recovery, putting in the work to stay sober, and the same thing for him, putting in the work to to get his voice back there's just been this really interesting camaraderie between him and I lately a lot. And we're both huge, huge golfers. So we golf almost every day on the road that we have a day off. <clears throat> Howie I've known for 30 years. Um, I've known him the longest. We used to always go to all the same auditions when there was any audition back in Orlando for someone who was Latin. We're the two Latin guys. <laughs> so we'd always show up like in our full like menudo outfits. Um, and then Nick and I are the youngest. So Nick and I have always, we've always had our own little special, you know, bond. Um, but I, I can tell you this for a fact. I know I'm the only one that calls everybody when we're on downtime just to say, hi, nobody calls me. There's, there's nothing wrong with that, but nobody calls me. I call them. I'm like, Hey, what's up, rock? How you doing? Hey, Kev, you want to go see a movie or whatever? Like I've had to be the one to like instigate like double date night with Kevin and his wife or like, you know, if, if Nick's in town, you know, come over and like, we'll watch football. But Nobody really ever calls me. I don't know what the deal is. Like, I mean, this this particular tour I feel has been the closest we've ever been. I don't know what it is, but I think now, just again, we're all married, we're all family men. There's a different level of respect and appreciation for 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 each other. And now we've kind of taken the bull by the horns and we can really kind of plan our life and have that healthy balance now. Like we're not just needle to the grindstone, go, go, go. Like we need to have a balance. And now that we're all dads, priorities change, you know? So if I can be home with my daughter to go see her dance recital and there's an opportunity to do a, a TV show or something like that, if it's not that important, I'm going to oh, say yeah. no. Yeah, That's where I want to be is with, my, is, is with my kids. So, you know, it's nice to have that balance now. Where before it was just point and we just went, you know? But... Uh, Things have definitely changed, I, I, I feel, for the better. And that's why the overall just energy is just much more positive. What was it like at home as a kid for you? Like, kind of walk me through what AJ's <laughs> life was like, you know, when you started, like, memories of four or five years old. What, what was that um, like? I mean, I started, I was always performing as far back as I can recall. Um, I did musical theater from when I was 6 to 12. Um, did about 75 different uh, plays. What about outside of the years? performance, or like as a human? Like, what's, I mean, the, what's, I, the, what's the scenario with you at your house? It's weird. Like, I'm an, I'm an only child. Um, my mom had twin girls after I was born. They both did not survive. Um, 
which my mom always says I was more than enough to handle anyways, which I get it now. Um, I was just kind of a, I was a real goofy kid. Like, um, when the, when the Nintendo power glove came out, I cut the cord off of it and wore it to school. Cause I wanted kids to think I was cool. Um, did not work out in my favor. Uh, I didn't wear a backpack at school. I carried a briefcase. Um, I took my mom's glasses and popped the lenses out and wore the frames because I wanted to look smart. Um, I was friends more so with girls than with guys. Um, I wasn't big into sports. I was the kind of outgoing, like always on performer type personality. Like that's just who I was. Um, but I always took care of my family. It was my, you know, a single mom living with my mom and my grandparents and me in a three bedroom apartment. And, um, you know, just going to school, just trying to be a normal kid, still doing the acting thing, you know, whatever, going to dance class. My goal and my dream as a child was to be a backup dancer for Michael or Janet Jackson. That's all I wanted to be when I was growing up. Um, I love dance. And now I get to do all of it. I get to act, I get to dance, I get to sing, and it's all in, with, within the same world. But I was just a goofy, dorky kid. I'm still a dork. And I, and I will forever be a big kid. Because, you know, Bashley started when I was 14. So I got pulled out of high school. I got tutored. I graduated. But I never, I, I never went to homecoming. I never had a prom until my 40th. My wife gave me my prom. It is the most amazing. I'm even getting emotional thinking about it. <clears throat> it was the most amazing thing. Most amazing night of my life. I mean, literally spot on. DJ played every song from, from the class of 96. They had the little cheesy photo booth with all the props. Of course, my wife and I were prom king and queen. Of course. All my boys Can you imagine showed up. if you weren't? What an upset. If, that like, would, yeah, that hit, would have been Henry like. and Monica from Three Houses Down. Oh, uh, I'd be so <laughs> mad. Been like, if she would have picked her best friend and like her boyfriend, I'd be like, really? Really? But yeah, I mean, looking back on it, I've I've kind of gotten past like feeling like I like feeling that moment of like missing out, but again, I had to grow up really fast. So again, I'm always going to be a big kid. Now I get to live vicariously through my kids, which is awesome. You know, like I'm a huge sneakerhead. I'm a huge gadget guy. At one point, I had every Nerf gun you could ever think of, and I was in my 30s. Like. I had a Nerf war at my house, with, at, at back in my old house with me and T-Pain. It was a weird night. But, like, again, I just, that brings me happiness just to keep that youthfulness, you know? Living in this three-bedroom apartment with my parents, and it was interesting. The apartment complex that we lived in, Britney Spears lived in, Ryan Gosling, a lot of the Musketeers lived there. So I'd play basketball with Ryan almost every afternoon unless he was taping. Um and I'll never forget, I actually kissed Britney on the basketball court. This is before she became the Britney Spears. It was, yeah, it was an in interesting life growing up. Whenever you guys pop as a band and you're so famous, you can't move, do you actually feel it as it's growing? Like, are you working so hard that you're not actually uh, understanding what's going on around you? Or, or, yeah. or do, you, do you really know all the time? My wife just asked me the other day, um, we're watching this, this CBS morning show that we had just uh, filmed and just how this entire tour now has been sold out. It's our biggest arena tour in 18 years. And she's like, is it freaking you out that this is happening again? Like getting this second chance, getting this renaissance, this resurgence to happen again on the level of 99, 2000, I said, you know, all of it still hasn't hit me. 26 years I've been doing this and it still hasn't hit me. I don't know when that, well, I feel like for me, it's going to finally hit me when we finally win a Grammy. That's what I feel it's going to, because to me, that is like the creme de la creme of our, of our world is to win a you know, Grammy. We've been nominated nine times, which is amazing in itself. But to finally win, I feel, will solidify that kind of respect and credibility that some of us feel like, how much longer? Because I had my whole speech plan. And, and I'll say it again, cause, and I'll just I'll put myself out there. I wanted to speak last, and I wanted to dedicate 
our Grammy to Leo DiCaprio and then say nothing else. And I'm sure the press would have been like, what are you talking about? I look at us like the Leo DiCaprio's of the music world. It took him how many years to finally get an Oscar? He should have been winning multiple times. Departed. I mean, uh, Gilbert Grape, so many movies he should have won for. And he, it, it, it took him getting mauled by a fake bear to win a freaking <laughs> Oscar. So, you know, what is it going to take for us to finally, finally get there? What is it going to take? That's the real question that I, I'm wondering. I, I'm wondering if it's going to be us together for 30 years. I mean, 26 years, it's unheard of for groups like us. And I still don't know. What is it going to take? Is it going to be a, this amazing collaboration moment? Is it going to be, um, you know, is it is it going to be like that lifetime achievement thing? Like, what is it going? What's it going to be? That's an interesting question. I'm, I'm thinking of, like my wheels are spinning a little bit, and there are the there are the positive things that could be a really interesting collaboration from someone that you wouldn't expect that critics love because you know the Grammys are yeah. s- it's such a critic thing. It is. It's it's more internal based as opposed to like the AMAs is like fan based right. billboard awards all that stuff is more about the music and the fans but the Grammys is like the Oscars it's that it's that more corporate side of things so let's talk to us who would you guys who could you guys do do a project with <sighs> like right now like her who, her could be cool who's loved both by cr- the critics because she wins at the Grammys yeah. um Janelle Monet I would love to do something with her now, um, we got to think it just can't be somebody super cool but also, because Janelle Monae is also there, but I don't, yeah. don't want to get off just doing cool things. Um, that the Grammy voter, I'm a Grammy voter. Yeah. And then you look, and there's so many. Also, AJ, there are so many categories. You don't even look at all the categories. Like, I would like us to do something outside of our comfort zone. Like, if we were to do something with, like, the Marcus King Band, or, like, St. Oh, Paul yeah. and the Broken Bones, or something that's so avant-garde that you'd be like, what did I just listen to? Like, you know... St. Paul is like that big band, and, and a Marcus King is just ridiculous. Like in the jazz space. Like in jazz or like, I'm obsessed with, I mean, I'm probably like the like last man to get on board with Tuxedo, but like even that kind of, that old Roger and Zap type, type vibe as well. I mean, who knows? I mean, maybe it's something so far left field that everyone goes, wait a minute. Now, like you said, there's, there's positives and there's negatives. The positive would be we finally get the Grammy. But the negative to me would be like, but we had to do it with someone else. What is it going to take for mm. us to do That's it on our own? Okay. You know what I mean? Um, well, uh, let's see. Someone could die. You don't want that to happen. Yeah, no, no, no. That, you don't want that to happen. Somebody already went to rehab. We've, <laughs> we've, we've already played that one out. That one's done. Or um, they make, or, or I'm just rolling through scenarios. They make a movie about you, like a real serious like someone we've hops talked in, about it. Someone hops in, like a, a major director, and they make a movie. And there's some story because, as you know, these biopics have a thread that maybe you haven't followed always. Exactly, or they embellish certain scenarios. Like you know, I think that's it. I think we just figured it out. Bohemian Rhapsody to me was phenomenal. Okay, phenomenal. So if you did do a biopic about us, um, because there is a lot that we've never shared or that the press and media don't know about. I mean, yes, everyone knows about the Lou Perlman stuff. Everyone knows about this and that and the other. And But there's so much more, like, after we did our documentary, we did get a lot out. But if you put it in a film aspect, who knows? Mm. Like, and we have, you need a couple big actors. Yep. You can't be in it. No, we would be the producers. It's be so we would, serious. Yeah. We'd be in the room. We Like, we'd be basically. We just figured it out. Yeah. We, just, we just figured out how you're going to win your Grammy. There you go. And then you yeah. do the soundtrack. Yep. Done. The and, and we record all of our music. There's a redemption at the end. Yep. You're back selling out tours. There it yeah. is. It's done. Just go ahead and Okay. Done. 2022. Perfect. Would you, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, 25 years after the first record, right? That's yes. that's the It's almost that time. Do you think you'll get uh hit from the Is it, you're 26 years now? We're 26 years now. Okay. Do you feel like you you should have been reached out to by I mean, now? There's there's been I've heard rumblings about that. I've heard rumblings about the MTV Vanguard. I've heard rumblings about all kinds of things. But again, until we see it, who knows? But I mean, how do they not? Like, let's let's aside I mean, from if you think um, pop music is your jam, if right. you think boy bands are your jam, or, or not, you know, people have all mm-hmm. these feelings about it. Um, you can't deny, and I know this has got to be where you're frustrated with just the data. Exactly. Like, I mean, if you just look at it on paper. 
it's all factual. Like nothing's embellished. Right. This is actually our career. This is what we've achieved. This is what we've done. And this is what we've set out to do. And this is our, and this is where we, where we want to go. Um, you know, I've, I've often, I don't want to say joked about, but I've, I've often thought to myself, man, how bad would it be if one of us goes and does a solo thing and that's the one that gets the Grammy before the group does, or that's the one that gets the whatever before the group does. But at the same time, it's all because of the group. We there would be no platform for any of us to stand. No one without. could go solo if it wasn't for the body of. I of, it, absolutely. Yeah. I feel that you know this is the epicenter that's been set for us too, and we've always said we we will let each of us go spread their wings and you know go do what you want to do. We know there's power in numbers, but you never know. One of us may have that moment that just shines. You know, Brian Brian did have it in the Christian world. He won multiple Dove Awards, which is the equ the e equivalent to a Grammy in the Christian market. So it but, can be done. But not a Grammy. But not a Grammy. But not yes, a Grammy. but not that nice little Grammy. I wonder what it'll t that's an interesting question. Yeah. I, I I think people would, because again, everything is driven by data and money, right? Yeah. Man, you guys make the right movie. People are going to go see it, obviously. Yeah. What else is really interesting to me is like Neil Portnow used to work at Jive Records. And we were with Jive Records. So whenever I see Neil, I'm like, Neil... What's up, buddy? You know, are we, is it going to be our 30th? Is it going to be our 27th? Is it going to be our 20th? Like, what's it going to be? And he yeah. just always smiles with that, with that nice silver beard and those glasses. But I'm like, again, I think we're on to something here. I think if you did do like a raw biopic and make it just raw and emotional. Not what people are expecting. The same way with yeah. the movie as you're talking about the music. Yeah. Like, you know, you go you off. You could do something. original music as well as. Yeah go in and re-record, which we've we've actually re-recorded a bunch of our music already. Um, For legal reasons? Um, kind of like the Taylor, no, like we, the Taylor we, stuff? No, we have a, a secret project up our sleeve. Um, I, hopefully, hopefully we'll be out next year. Um, when we made the DNA album, we also made another album. But I can't say what's on it. But I can say that is it we a polka it. album in Spanish? It could be Grammy. That was see. That's I'm telling you, us and us and Weird Al duet would be fantastic. That's the uh, Weird Al ever do any Backstreet stuff? Yes, did he, he did. Uh, I bought it on eBay as opposed to <laughs> I want it that way. Um, he put Backstreet's back in one of his polka uh, songs, um, which was amazing. It, and I, I believe it, it came after like a White Snake song, and it was it was like a weird transition. But he did Backstreet's back. Um, I think he did a third one, I feel like. But yeah, he's like back in the day, like if either Weird Al parody like did any kind of parody with you or 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 Beavis and Butthead had you on the show, like then you were like super, yeah. super cool. So and Weird Weird Al's an amazing guy. I mean, that guy's got a lot of Grammys. I'm just saying. That guy does. <laughs> he's a got lot a lot of Grammys. <laughs> we got just a few more minutes here. I'm not that funny though. So let me ask you a few. So here's some, I wrote down some notes, it's stuff I've always wondered. Uh, the financial part of being in a group, ask, a lot of my friends are in bands. Mm. And so, you know, they have a company and the company gets paid and they split right. it. And also something with artists, uh, country artists, is that people just assume once they're on the radio, they start to get rich immediately. Like it's a, it's yeah, a bad no. assumption. It just doesn't happen. No, that's just not true. No. Where, did the fame and the, where did the fame and the money actually meet? Because I'm assuming you would be famous for a while before you actually got yeah, some money. Yeah, I think, honestly, like... It'll always go back to the Millennium album. I feel like 99 is when things really kind of came to a head, um, you know, because we were doing our show was in the round. So we're doing domes, we're doing stadiums, we're doing all these things, multiple arena nights. Um, guarantees were the highest they've ever been. But again, that's a different time where like a person could sell 1.3 or 1.5 million albums the first week. Week. Yeah. Week. Yeah. Now, if you sell a quarter of a, a quarter of a million albums first week, you're going to go to number one. It doesn't, it's, it's completely different now. You know, like I was reading about Taylor and, you know, she did like, I think it was like two, 240 and then Tool came out with theirs and it was like 266. And I'm just thinking like, wait, 240 for Taylor? But again, that's the new standard. I mean, it's completely different now. Even though she's still going to go out and sell out stadiums and she's beyond talented. Um, I bought both albums. I'm a huge fan of Tool, and I'm a huge Taylor fan because of my kids. That Tool record was nuts, right? Wasn't it's it crazy and so, so good? It's so good. I mean, I like fifteen minute up, songs on it too. Like yeah. every other track was thirteen minutes plus. It's you know, it, going back to their first records when I was growing up. Like I, I became a fan of them 
right around the same time that I really started listening to a lot of like Slipknot and just I I kind of went in this weird direction musically as a fan, um, and then they just kind of stopped and I was like, all right, well. And when I heard they were making a new record, I got stupid excited. I was like, this is going to be interesting. And same with like Radiohead. Like, I mean, massive Radiohead fan. Um, I don't know if, 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 if you've seen, I don't know the name of the song, but um, they have a new video about Radiohead. That's just, it's, it's a 13 minute video. It's unbelievable. It's all choreographed. It is the, it's one of the most beautiful videos I think I've, I've ever seen ever since Weapon of Choice, which was one of my all time top three videos. Spike Jones. I mean, Christopher Walken dancing is one of the most iconic things you'll ever see in your life. So, yeah. But, I mean, it's weird how the numbers have changed so much now compared to what it was 20 years ago. You know, a million albums sold first week or first day. You know, I think Eminem did it in, like, three days. It just doesn't that, – that will never happen again, ever. That's a whole different time that we'll never, ever come back to, Ever. You know, you bring up Radiohead, and I'm, I like Tom York. I like Radiohead. Yeah. You know, it's it, growing up when we did, and you're in that scene. Radiohead kind of created a lane for other people to jump in and out of, but they exactly. had their, they definitely had their own lane. Oh yeah. And he, they don't play creep, right? They just they, yeah. they don't play creep. You know that. Yeah. You can't go to radio. If you could not do one song, if you could creep one song, what, yeah. would, what would you do? It would be quit playing games. I just feel like, you know, if you don't do, I want it that way. Fans are gonna probably stampede the stage um you know like i was fortunate enough to go see prince one night before he passed away years ago and he did four encores just to mess with people because by the end of the of the first set he didn't do purple rain and people were mad <laughs> as hell and he came out for the first encore and just did purple rain and then left didn't do when doves cry came out and like I mean, just kept keeping people into it and I was like, okay, thank God, because, you know, if you come to a Bash Boy concert and you don't see these certain songs, but what we found a way to do it so it, it, it appeases our fans and it also gets out of our head after so many times doing it is you do medleys or you do remixes of the songs. Um, but my creep would be Quit Playing Games. I mean, that's, that's one we've done since the very first Red album back in 90, what, 97. Yeah, I just... There's no amount of remix for that song to be cool to me anymore. I just, just I'm over it. <laughs> how's, your, how's your body with the dancing? I've had knee surgery on both my knees. Yeah. Um, probably going to have to have it done again. Um, you know, uh, surprisingly, we're all in pretty decent shape for all being 40 plus. Nick's not 40 yet, but he's going to be sooner than later. Um, you know, we, we definitely pop a lot more ibuprofen after the show and, um, I actually partnered up recently with a pharmaceutical company um, called Vivera, <clears throat> and we're um, we're putting out two different products. One is for pain management, all CBD based, and the and the one that's for pain management, I've literally give to all my boys now. It's a topical cream, and I tell you what, man, I kick that stuff on after every show now, and I am a million. I feel like a million bucks. Um, but uh, you know, we we do the ice bath stuff, all that stuff. It, you know, then then the nice thing about this this new show is. It's paced so well that we have a nice big gap in the middle where we're not dancing at all. And we can just kind of get that energy built back up to just take it home for the whole last act. Like Vegas, that was just go, 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 dance, 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 dance. That that definitely hurt me a lot more than this particular show right now. So, Do you guys have a, what they call it, a, a B mic or B stance or something else where you can talk to everyone in their ears um, while the show's happening? We... Um, well, well. <laughs> or do you have a button? Like, how are you guys communicating? We so like, we we started really messing with each other on this on on this last leg, um, especially Howie. God bless Howie. We love him to death. I love that dude, but he gets nervous still to this day. He gets nervous, especially in cities where like if like L.A. and New York, he gets nervous. Or if he's got family coming out, or any of his like, you know, celebrity friends, whatever, he gets he gets nervous. I'm like, dude, we've been doing this for 26 years. You still get nervous? He's like, yeah. So we each talk individually during the course of the show, and he's the first one or the second one to talk. And then he does a little bit of a solo song from our album. That way we can get more new songs in the show. And three different times he called the song the wrong name. 
And so now we're purposely telling him the wrong name in his ears while we're quick changing. We're like, it's chances. The song's called Chateau. But we're like, Howie, chances, chances. And we just keep, we keep messing with each other. Kevin doesn't have any patience for it. If Nick messes with Kevin, he'll put Nick on blast on stage. He'd be like, oh, Nick's talking a bunch of crap in my ears right now. Sorry, I, I got to pull these out because I can't pay attention to me talking to you guys. So we definitely like to mess with each other quite a lot. Do you guys think the click track or do you just have it all down at this point? It's all, the only one that we have a click with is the acapella, just so we don't lose time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even though we got our in-ears in, that particular song, we're out over the audience about 20 feet up in the air. So it's a lot of slap back if we don't. Um, aside from that, we have a click on a couple different things. If, if it's a bare bones intro where it's just, you're coming in on that first on that first line. You gotta know where it starts. Yeah. yeah. Um, aside from that, no. Every, usually, there's a good like 30, 40 second intro musically that just gets you into a song. But we have a couple of songs that have clicks for sure. All right. Uh, speed round. What was the last concert you had to buy tickets for? Uh, Taylor Swift. The last movie you saw in theaters. It Chapter Two. What'd you think? Loved it. Yeah. Uh, what was something that did live up to the hype? Um. That did live up to the hype. Did live up to the hype. Huh. I have to say, Yeezys. Yeah, they are like I clouds. did not want to like them, and they either. are very comfortable. I did not want to like them. Mm. And my wife is like, why? I'm like, don't ask. <laughs> what is your most humbling, wow, I was totally wrong about that person moment? Totally wrong. Who um, are you wrong about? And you're like, oh, man, I was totally wrong um, about them. They actually are pretty cool, or they're not pretty cool. Or uh, Wow. Um Tom Brady, um, I'm married into a Steelers family, so I have to stick to that or I'll be disowned. But um, when I got to meet Tom, I because I just did not like the Patriots because they just they won't let anybody else win. It's like for crying out loud, give someone else a chance. And then like knowing more about him and knowing that he takes a pay cut and that the rest of the team gets more money and his wife makes more money than him, but he's all about charity and this and he's just this like he's such a good guy like you can't not like him and then when i met him i'm like oh, damn you really are this nice you got that pretty smile too you're killing me bro that'd be there yeah, he's such a he's such a great guy all right final one what piece of advice from an artist that stayed with you the longest throughout wow. your career someone said hey listen here um i have the perfect answer for that we opened up for the remaining members of the temptations at a festival back in orlando years ago like 1995 or 6 and after we finished the founding member shaked our hands and said we did a great job and he said just want you boys to remember something this is show business it's called that for a reason because while you're on stage doing your show your business could be walking out the back door behind your back so just always remember that and I guess that was a prelude to what ended up happening to us through our career with Lou and everything else but it's show business. Always keep an eye on your back. Well, good luck recording the record. Thank you, man. Which song? I mean, let's let's hash this out here. Which of these three songs? Because I'll do it. Don't tell anybody we had this talk. All those this will be in. The, everybody will know. Yeah. But unless they don't know. <laughs> but so, which of these songs would you like me to play? I'm gonna let you pick, and don't tell anybody we're doing this outwardly, right? Okay. And I'm just gonna be like, because again, we're on 150 radio stations. My show is. Yeah. So we have enough people listening that I, can, I feel like the sample size will reflect back if they like the song yeah. without knowing mm -hmm. exactly who it is. Which of the songs, Night Visions, Boy and a Man, or Give You Away, would you like me to conduct that experiment with? You pick. Wow. <laughs> uh, I would say Boy and a Man. Okay. Yeah. That's the deal. We're gonna, that's what we're going to do. Okay. Yep. Um, so probably next week or so. Okay. I'm going to let this breathe a little bit. Yeah. And then I'm going to play Boy and a Man, and I'm just going to set it up and go, I don't even tell you. It's not out of what I've done before, so everyone's like, right. like what is happening? I'm like, hey, we got another one. I'm not going right. to tell you who it is. You just tell me if you like the song. Cool. Hit me up, and uh, let's see what happens. I'm going to get your number, and then you're going to text me and tell me what the end result is. I want to know. Well, the end result is it takes a while, right? Well, yeah. It's not, nobody even calls radio stations. That's not even right, a thing but I'm, anymore. But I'm, I'm just curious to see yeah, over I, time, like, what You can the, feel it. After about yeah. a couple days, yeah. you can really feel I wanna it. I want to know. I want to know. So, Mike, remember that. We're going to do Boy and a Man. Got it. And we're going to play it. We're, and we're not going to say anything about it. And yeah. I think that would be a good experiment. Awesome. And I like that. 
And oh. while I'm here, as I cut these songs and I get these things nicely fine-tuned this week, I'll start sending you some more stuff and you tell me what you think. I don't want, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, you want to be surprised? I, I, in my general rule, and this is how I can keep friends in this world, I don't listen to anything new ever. I mean, if it's not out with my listeners right, can hear yes. it, I won't listen to it. Okay. Ever. Okay. Good to as know. Much, as much as you know. Yeah, because then you can get jaded about it, or you can get per, or or biased, and then and it's, it's a slippery yeah. slope yeah. too. No, and everybody yeah, wants to. Yeah, because you don't want to. I know. love you. Oh no, I get it. It's the I get rule. It. Like here it is. Yeah. There's the line, and if I if I stay consistent, then yeah. You know, All right. consistency Perfect. is currency in my, in my mind. Oh, I'm, gonna I'm do sitting here. I'm jealous. My, my, mine's literally coming tomorrow. The new iPhone. Do you like it? Have you really messed with it yet? I don't know that I've messed with it enough. Mike has one too, and he yeah. thinks the camera is freaking. The camera's like really good on it. That well, see, like that's their biggest selling point. Like I, this is the longest I've actually had an iPhone to the point where I actually ran my contract out, so I'm getting money back by getting the pre-order done. But what's crazy to me is, I was beta testing the new iOS 13 on my 11. Worst idea I've ever done in my life. Too much. For it's it's it has thrown my phone so much out of whack. So. Note to anyone, don't beta test the new iOS before you get the new phone. The but, stickers are cool. Like the emojis, you can send emojis of your own head. Yeah. Pretty yeah. neat. Yeah. But again, the I'm sure there's so much about it yes. that we, yeah. But I mean, I've been trying to get all the research done before I get mine so I know what I'm doing, but it's, it's probably so much more. But it looks, it actually looks cool. And, yeah, I was worried about how it would look with the, with the, with the, the, with the with multiple like lens. Yeah. That, yeah. That is pretty freaking sweet. And I'm blind and I had to get, I have to get the big screen. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Well, it's like once you go big, you can't go downsize. Like, you don't know someone not, that I hope owns that's it. not the case with the ladies. But yeah, like no uh, one, nobody buys an Escalade and then goes and gets a smart car. Like it's yeah, it's the other way. <laughs> well, listen, my friend, we're gonna because um, I, I had a friend hit me up um, who works for ABC. I don't even know. Do you, do we know how this all got together here? Because I had a friend who works for ABC. It's an executive. I do shows for ABC. Right. They're like, hey, I'm friends with AJ, um, and I'm like, dude, I've met AJ twice. It's been awesome to me. It was before we saw each other in Vegas. Right. I was like, love to have him by. We do. You know, this long form show that gets a ton of podcast downloads. We played on the radio too. I'd love to have them come by and just kind of talk a little bit. My guess first it, time meeting you was at the Ryman. That's right. I was playing and then, the show. Yeah. Yeah. And then, no, uh, I guess I was with Darius. You were, like, yeah, yeah, you were Darius. And then I went up and I did. I went it that way. And then, uh, did you ever see the photo of me in your parking space? Yeah, I yes. did. I was like, You're where are you, bro? Building. I'm going to, yes. That's right. Yes, yes. So, uh, and he was like, what about AJ? I was like, dude, I'm going to tell him one day I would love to see him. I, so, and I really appreciate you taking the time. No, it's, it's, it's been great. Well, okay, we're going to leave it at this. We'll see how it goes. You're in town, cutting a record. Yeah. Let me know if you need a, a good Uber driver. Okay, bring it, man. <laughs> I love right. it. Uh, we're done. Mike, you good? Anything you want? To, anything with you? I think we're good, yeah. All right, there it is, episode 201, AJ McLean. Uh, give me a time. I don't need a date, but you're trying to get this body of work out. By when? Like, what's the goal? By top of the year, um, album title is Long Road. Um, and, uh, you know, I was trying to do it this year, but just, I just want to take my time and do this right. So top of the year, January is when we're looking at having the album out. Do you play guitar? I am learning right now. Okay. Um, do you have I, a player that travels with you? I do. My yeah. MD has been helping me and, and whatnot. I play drums, um, but, um, uh, and a little bit of piano. Um, I play harmonica, but I don't, I, I've always wanted to learn how to play guitar even before this whole thing started. Like it's just been my passion. My daughter is taking lessons, and she's got better chops than I do. <laughs> she's six, and she can play better than I can right now. So, but yeah, I definitely, I, I definitely want to learn on CMA Country Christmas, which you're gonna be at this week. Are you, yeah. are you part of the show? I am are literally. You? I'm just. I was invited by uh, you know CMA just to come and just enjoy okay. the show. So I'm just gonna come out and have some fun and just enjoy some good uh, Christmas music. And it'd be good for you to be around. Like, listen, you you just around people. As you know, it's all yeah. relationships. People are like, you know, I like that guy. It is. Let, let me let me give a little opening and see if people. Then it's like, how good as is it actually? Exactly. You know how it is. And I'm I'm, I'm a social butterfly, and I just love people, so it'll there be fun. Is. Right from the airport over here, episode two hundred one. AJ McLean, good to see you, bud. You too, brother. <laughs>